The complex choreography of the various components of the lipid transportation and utilization system is essential for the normal supply, exchange, and clearance of cholesterol and triglycerides in the body. The functional integration of lipoproteins, apolipoproteins, enzymes, transporters, and receptors in this system is a delicate physiologic balance. Disruption of one or more components of this system can tip the balance, creating dyslipoproteinemias that promote accumulation of cholesterol in the arterial wall. These dyslipoproteinemias are characterized by abnormally high or low plasma lipid levels. While lipid profile measurements serve as the primary basis for determining treatment, they fail to reveal the intricacies of atherogenic risk associated with specific lipoprotein particle populations. Let's look at the triglyceride and cholesterol distribution in the various particles. Atheroprotective ApoA1 guided particles primarily carry HDL cholesterol. In contrast, Atherogenic cholesterol resides in ApoB guided particles known as non-HDL. LDL is the most familiar carrier of non-HDL cholesterol. However, a considerable amount of atherogenic cholesterol is also contained in other non-HDL lipoproteins including chylomicron remnants, VLDL and IDL. When these particles are increased, it is elevated plasma triglyceride that signals the presence of additional atherogenic non-HDL cholesterol. Therefore, treatment decisions focused solely on the LDL component of non-HDL cholesterol fail to reveal total atherogenic burden. In addition, an imbalance in atherogenic ApoB and atheroprotective ApoA1 guided lipoproteins further intensifies atherogenic burden. Moreover, pathologic modification of apolipoproteins or the lipoprotein contents of both ApoB and ApoA1 particles can influence their metabolism and atherogenicity. Finally, the presence of additional cardiovascular risk factors can accelerate atherosclerosis. Now, let's take a look at the origins of dyslipoproteinemias associated with premature cardiovascular disease. These origins may be divided into four categories. Elevated ApoB, formation of atherogenic remnants, decreased HDL, and the metabolic syndrome. One cause of atherosclerosis is reduced clearance of ApoB particles, primarily in the liver. In the classic example, familial hypercholesterolemia, lipoprotein particles and their lipolytic pathways are normal. However, severe elevation of ApoB occurs due to a genetic defect in the LDL receptor. Patients with FH have elevated LDL and total cholesterol levels. Triglyceride levels are normal. Hepatic uptake of LDL is mediated by the LDL receptor. In FH, defective receptors thwart this process. Therefore, LDL particles accumulate in the circulation, increasing their atherogenic potential. Elevated ApoB particles may also be caused by overproduction. The common example of this condition is atherogenic dyslipidemia, also known as combined hyperlipidemia. LDL cholesterol and total cholesterol levels may be overtly elevated or deceptively normal, while triglycerides are elevated and HDL is often reciprocally low. However, the lipid profile does not reveal the atherogenic non-HDL cholesterol present. Actually, elevated triglycerides signal an increased presence of abnormally modified ApoB particles known as atherogenic remnants. These cholesterol-rich particles can be formed from chylomicrons as a result of overnutrition or from VLDL, IDL, or LDL associated with visceral abdominal obesity. Let's examine the mechanism of atherogenic remnant formation using VLDL as an example. Abdominal obesity is associated with release of free fatty acids from metabolically active adipocytes. The excess fatty acids accumulate in the liver, leading to increased production of abnormally large triglyceride-rich VLDL. 
when compared to normal, triglyceride-rich VLDL have substantially more triglyceride in their core and an increase in APOC3. Normally, APOC2 activates lipoprotein lipase to stimulate hydrolysis of core triglycerides. However, in these abnormally large VLDL, the presence of abundant APOC3 inhibits APOC2 from activating LPL. As a result, hydrolysis of triglycerides from the particle's core is diminished. In addition, APOC3 interferes with VLDL binding to LDL or LRP receptors, thereby impairing its catabolism and increasing its time in the circulation. More time in the circulation provides greater opportunity for the enzyme cholesterol ester transfer protein. CETP mediates the exchange of cholesterol esters for triglycerides between the cores of ApoA1 and ApoB particles. All ApoB particles participating in this exchange become enriched with cholesterol ester while remaining large and triglyceride rich. Atherogenic remnants can also lead to the formation of another atherogenic particle. As these large particles journey along the delipidation cascade to form LDL, their triglyceride-enriched cores are susceptible to hydrolysis by hepatic lipase. This promotes the formation of an abnormal particle called small, dense LDL. These particles are easily oxidized and are readily cleared by non-LDL receptor pathways such as the arterial wall macrophage, which makes them highly atherogenic. Decreased HDL may occur independently, but more often it is associated with elevated triglyceride-rich ApoB particles as in atherogenic dyslipidemia. The presence of triglyceride-rich ApoB remnants facilitates CETP-mediated exchange of triglycerides with HDL's cholesterol esters. As HDL's core composition changes, its acquired triglycerides are susceptible to hydrolysis by hepatic lipase, which reduces its size to a particle that is rapidly catabolized, resulting in reduced plasma concentrations of HDL. As a consequence, reverse cholesterol transport from the arterial wall is diminished. Metabolic syndrome, an emerging epidemic of Western society, affects nearly 50 million people in the United States. Root causes include obesity, physical inactivity, and genetic factors. Multiple pathologic conditions related to the root causes closely interplay in this complex disease. In aggregate, these conditions can dramatically accelerate the development of atherosclerosis and type 2 diabetes. It has been proposed that insulin resistance provides a mechanistic link between many of the conditions associated with the metabolic syndrome, including atherogenic dyslipidemia, a pro-inflammatory state, and possibly a prothrombotic state, and hypertension. Insulin resistance is a generalized metabolic disorder in which the response of tissue to insulin is impaired. This impairment results in disruption of glucose metabolism, ultimately leading to elevated gluconeogenesis, hyperinsulinemia, and glucose intolerance. Insulin resistance is also closely associated with abdominal obesity. Adipose tissue, particularly visceral abdominal fat, is increasingly recognized as a central culprit in the metabolic syndrome. For instance, release of excess free fatty acids provides greater substrate for hepatic production of large VLDL. This leads to the hallmark features of atherogenic dyslipidemia, non-HDL cholesterol accumulation, the formation of highly atherogenic small dense LDL, and a reciprocal reduction in HDL. Additionally, secretion of plasminogen activator inhibitor 1 from adipocytes may contribute to a prothrombotic milieu, also associated with the metabolic syndrome. Finally, adipose tissue releases pro-inflammatory cytokines such as tumor necrosis factor alpha, which stimulate a second amplifying wave of cytokine release. 
This second pro-inflammatory wave includes interleukin-6, which instructs hepatocytes to boost production of acute phase reactants, including C-reactive protein, an emerging independent risk determinant for cardiovascular disease. The constellation of pathologic processes at work in the metabolic syndrome requires aggressive multifactorial treatment approaches for managing this emerging epidemic.